Now, they range from goats and rams to a wolfhound and even an antelope. They are, of course, mascots, prized and pampered in the British Army with symbolic connections to their regiments that date back hundreds of years. Sixteen ceremonial animals are kept by ten army regiments, but only six are recognised as official mascots. But, as Julie Knox has been finding out in Germany, status or size doesn't affect how well-loved they are. Meet Charlie, who goes by the stage name Alamein. The Irish Grey Geldings, the Queen's Royal Hussars Regimental, Pride and Joy. He's official, but he doesn't hold him rank. He's on the equipment table along with the other pieces of kit. I'd rather have a, a rather large mascot than, than something so small. Yeah, it takes a lot more time and effort to get ready and, and look after, but it's one of the proud things that the regiment does. He's a character, and... He, he can sometimes be naughty, but just like a child, but sometimes can behave himself as good as God, like he did on the parade. It took six months to ready the horse for his first parade in the autumn. He had to stand still for two hours and carry the solid silver kettle drums on which the battle honours are inscribed, as well as carrying Karen. It's the first parade I've ever done where I've smiled from start to finish. I felt so proud. Walking on, every eye was on me, and then the band come in, it was... Fantastic, and he was brilliant. First parade, didn't bat an eyelid. He was more concerned with a stationary tank than a marching band and the troops. He's close to 19 hands and still growing. Well, from Alamein, who's definitely the largest regimental mascot in this area, we're about to go and have a look at some altogether smaller animals in Munster. Who or what would live in a house like this? It was lovingly crafted for one York's minute recruits, Imphal and Quebec, who live at the camp gate so all visitors can peek at the pets. They've been disturbed from a winter dose, so I'm not about to cosy up to them. Their claws are sharp. In the olden days, when they were running out of food in the, in the war, they used to grab all these some ferrets or polecats and put them down the holes to bring rabbits or uh, to bring up so they could eat. The cookhouse must have been well stocked because the Yorkshire tradition of keeping a few ferrets fell away until a few years back when a farmer near their base in Northern Ireland presented these two to the battalion. On parade, obviously, they've got their own jackets and then uh, the, we walk them up and down on the leads so people come up to us and uh, ask us questions about them and basically the kids come and stroke them and play them and things like that. And do they march in time or anything like that? Uh, not, not quite, no. They're very uh, disobedient. <laughs> Now they're in the army, there's nothing stopping Imphal and Quebec seeing the world. The pets have passport and will travel, but hopefully not up anyone's trouser leg. Julie Knox, Forces News. Now that was